one stayed at home with me and my little sister. They're in the audience. Uh, they were a very little means, but I didn't know it. The farm had lots of space to play. Mom kept me stocked with drawing pads and library books. When I was nine, Dad got a promotion. We moved to Oberlin, Missouri. Uh, my mom thought that Catholic school would be better for us because the Lone Jack school curriculum was pretty far behind. I had to teach myself a whole year of math over the summer to catch up. It was a really good experience. To this day, I like to learn it from the book when I can. Uh, in junior high school, I went back to the public schools, uh, met a teacher named Mrs. Carter. She taught the gifted program from seventh to 12th grade, all the way through from junior high school to graduation. She focused on proper grammar, writing skills, and literature, things that a country boy might have otherwise disregarded. She was my favorite teacher. I had a great experience in high school. It, it was a small pond, so I got to be a big fish there. Uh, I was football star, homecoming king, and weightlifting champ, lots of big head stuff, you can see. Uh, there were lots of distractions, but again, I owe some thanks to my mom. Just before my freshman year began, she said, you have to take your grade seriously from now on. If you don't get a scholarship to college, you're probably not going. Five years later, I was on full scholarship, tuition and living expenses at the University of Missouri. After my freshman year, I got this wonderful summer job TAing in Calculus 3 from Professor Saab, a UIC alumni. So it was college all year round for me. I really enjoyed college, not for the normal reasons. I actually loved the classes. <laughs> By my junior year, uh, uh, each time I enrolled in a new major, it gave me a new scholarship. So by my junior year, I was a quadruple major. I was majoring in biochemistry, <laughs> chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Who knew that college could pay the bills? <laughs> then all of my fun came to an end. A biochemistry professor named Dr. Van Doren gave me some, some advice. He said, you're going to get burned out. You're going to be 80% done with four degrees, and you'll have nothing. So I decided to drop some majors and get a practical degree. With all those math and chemistry courses behind me, chemical engineering and math were the natural choices. I finished them both in five years. In chemical engineering, I landed a new summer job doing research with Professor Steve Lombardo. Professor Lombardo had me doing soul gel synthesis, a barium titanate for oscites. I did stupid things, like forgetting to work in the hood. This is me telling Cole not to make sure that he never puts me in charge of the lab course. But <laughs> Professor Lombardo decided that I was better at modeling and we published some nice, nice papers together. As I was thinking about graduate school, it was Professor Lombardo who told me about the work that Alex Bell and Arup Chakravorty were doing at Berkeley. I applied for graduate school in 1999. The joint research of Arup and Alex is my first choice. Alex tried to recruit me, and Arup tried his best to dissuade me. He told me he didn't want students when I visited. He told me he didn't want students during the advisor selection process. He told me a few times that he didn't want me after I joined the group. <laughs> <laughs> I had an NSF fellowship, and I was difficult to chase away. Arup was a great theoretician with a great sense for exciting problems. The group worked on many different things, and he had PhD students from chemistry, biophysics, chemical engineering, so it was a really stimulating environment. His lab was situated in the Pitzer Center for Theoretical Chemistry uh, in Gilman Hall at Berkeley. It was easy to slip into group meetings with the other groups down in the Pitzer Center, and I fell in love with the reaction rate theory work that Bill Miller and David Chandler were doing. Arup and Alex tolerated these diversions. Alex thought the transition state search algorithms were really interesting. We got lots of citations from that work because my code got added to QChem. I never worked on those algorithms again, though, after my PhD. But I did take with me some ideas about this reaction ported identification problem that was all the rage in David Chandler's group. In December 2004, I moved to MIT for a postdoc with Bernhard Trapp. Bernhard struck a generous deal with me. He said, first work out the protein deamidation mechanism and then do anything that you want. I hated the protein deamidation work, and my thoughts were already trained on nucleation polymorphism and path sampling reaction portal. On Sunday morning, April 10th, 2005, I met a wonderful distraction from my boring deamination work. I walked up to this beautiful woman on Newberry Street in Boston and introduced myself. Kind of a sappy story, so when I talk about her, you're going to see me have to take pauses. <laughs> she, she would embarrass me if this was her speech by adding more details, but this is not her speech. The only detail that matters is that it worked. I got her number, and I still have the little slip of paper. We were an unlikely couple, a boy from the rural Midwest and a girl from the rural Mideast. One with family at a tea party and the other with family at the ball. <laughs> but we saw each other every night for six weeks and then we got married. The dumbest, most impulsive decision I ever made turned out to be the most wonderful part of my life. Okay, back to work now. I kept my bargaining with Bernhard. The protein deamination work is to this day well cited for showing how to examine acid base catalysis with initial calculations. Then Bernhard went on sabbatical. I was free to work at home in my pajamas. The, the paper on likelihood maximization, I wrote this paper on likelihood maximization to find reaction coordinates from path sampling data. It turns problems in reaction dynamics with hundreds of thousands of degrees of freedom into one dimensional pictures, and it loses absolutely no information in the process. It's still the most powerful tool in that corner of the literature. 
and to my knowledge, it was the first appearance of Bayesian inference tools in chemical physics. I missed the big data wave on that one by being 10 years early. I, I recognize this now when I see all the proposals come out. I think, well, what am I going to do now? Um, life, in, life in Boston was going well as a newlywed and as a postdoc. Bernhardt left me in charge of a brilliant PhD student named Greg Beckham while he was away. Greg and I wrote several papers together on polymorph transitions, diffusion of gas and gas, gas hydrates, and on optimal order parameters for studying nucleation. Then in spring 2006, the whole trout group flew to Italy to visit Bernhardt and Sabato host Giovanni Giacotti. I was scheduled to talk about the new likelihood maximization paper for 30 minutes, but Giovanni kept me on stage arguing with me for four hours. If you know Giovanni, you know that nothing could be more fun. Giovanni mocked many Italian curses at me, but he always said that while giggling. At the end of the four hours, Giovanni offered me a postdoc in the sea camp in Lyon, France. Bound and I accepted, and we moved to France on August 31st, 2006. We moved into a 120 square foot apartment, really it was that small, over the Place de Terreau. We traveled in France, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, and Belgium. It was a magical year for two village kids who never expected to see so much of the world. In spring 2007, I returned to the USA for about six weeks to do job interviews, and then Matt returned too for the second visit. I liked UCSB, not for the beach, but because I liked the rankings. I think there were eight at the time, the star set of chemical engineering faculty, and I thought that being their only theorist with kinetics expertise would make me a sought after collaborator. Madden was worried about the cost of living, but I promised her that we would get a house with no wheels. <laughs> and we signed on the dotted line. The early years at UCSB were really wonderful. Bad and I, mostly Bad, made these two <laughs> wonderful kids. Uh, yeah, I can't read that line. Uh, they were also productive <laughs> with the years in research. Okay, so I said something nice about you guys, but I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> They were also productive years in research. My group developed leading methods for simulations of solute precipitate nucleation. We resolved some long-standing controversies in solvent reaction dynamics, and I wrote this book on reaction rate theory. You've seen it a couple of times. The book took nine years to write, and has earned me about two thousand dollars. My wife jokes that that's about a nickel an hour. <laughs> but as of eleven a.m. today, it has been cited twenty-three times in twenty nineteen. That's also not extremely impressive. But 10 of, those papers, 10 of those papers that cited it have my book listed as the first entry in the references list, which I think shows that it's becoming seen to as the go-to reference on reaction rate theory. I learned about crystal growth, rate, uh, crystal growth rates from Mike Doherty, and we wrote 12 papers together. These culminated in the first ever simulation-based prediction of spiral growth rates for aqueous solution. I learned about the Phillips catalyst and many others from Susanna Scott. She opened many doors for me, and I really admire her as a scientist. The work with Susanna remains a central focus of my research today. It was extremely difficult to leave her and that collaboration behind. I'm really glad that it survives now and that we continue to work together. So why did I leave? I'm going to address this with brutal honesty. Except for four or five small board people, the faculty had entirely turned over. I talked about 12 courses, 12 different courses in 11 years, and generally not the ones that I wanted. I had become the go-to person to fill random gaps in the teaching schedule. There were plans to cram another group in the space that I was already sharing with Professor Shell. And I invited many colleagues to collaborate, but I really never managed to make myself uh, essential to a large number of people there. Uh, you know, conference invitations, external collaborators, external offers even, were becoming a constant reminder that my external value had eclipsed the degree to which I was valued at UCSB. Uh, of course, all of this changed once it became clear that I was considering other options, uh, but, you know, just a note to leadership, it's really important to value the incredible pool of young people that attracted me to this place before they start thinking about leaving. Uh, you know, really one of my main draws here was thinking that the future of this place looks excellent because of the young faculty that I, that I met on my visits. Uh, my first visit to UIUC was now three, one and a half years ago. I knew Paul, as he said, from long ago discussions about his nucleation work. I knew of many other people here, but I didn't really know any of them. I was thoroughly impressed by the chemical engineering faculty that I met and also the physical chemists that I met. Of course, the entire university is amazing, then Van and I had this really great time at Charles's house on our second visit, and the visits really left no doubt that this was going to be a good fit for us. I'm excited to work with so many people that are here in the audience. Uh, it was a frenetic first year getting moved in and rooted in town, but I promise that the collaborations that I uh, came to work will, will happen. I should also say that Paul was a delight to negotiate with, not because he's charming, but because he meticulously follows through <laughs> on everything we do. Finally, I want to thank my research group for taking this leap with me. Uh, they are here, and many of them moved from Santa Barbara to Illinois, and I wouldn't have left without them. We all love it here. 
to be honest, I have to, I have to say, Lyndon isn't sure yet whether he loves it or not. He, he calls Champagne the most okayest place ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let me conclude briefly with a summary of my vision for the future. My group is still pursuing reaction rate theory topics. Currently, we're thinking about the kinetics of oriented attachment, the kinetics of association, and supermolecular polymerization of biomolecules. We're still pursuing the kinetics of crystal nucleation and growth. Currently, we're extending that effort from simple model systems to pharmaceutical molecules and solid-solid coherent precipitate nucleation. We're very excited about method, new methods that we've developed for studying single-site catalysts on amorphous supports, and we're eager to apply these to real catalysts. We're also pursuing a few new directions related to nanoparticle synthesis and nice growth inhibition. On the teaching side, I'm thrilled to be teaching this graduate level course that I colloquially call Kinetics for the Rest of Us. It aims to change how we teach kinetics and reaction engineering to broaden the traditional scope of topics for proper reactions and catalysis to include the many other rate processes that we study in our labs. Polymerization, crystallization, nanoparticle synthesis, self-assembly, cell populations, biochemical networks, etc. And finally, I'm really happy to be teaching at a public university like the one that opened so many doors for me. Inshallah, Van and I will be able to repay the generous scholarships and professorships that I've received. Thank you all for this honor, and thank you to Janet and William Lightman for supporting this great public university.